In this lecture example, we are going to be looking at assets moving in and out of the CDT net. So basically paragraph 12 in section 9H. Now, again, it's very important for you to remember at this point in time that you need to know what is included in the CDT net for a resident and for a non-resident. And just as a reminder, for a resident, it is any asset. And for non-residents, immovable property in South Africa and assets attributable to a permanent establishment in South Africa. Then also remember certain assets, for example, personal use assets, will also consider to be outside of the net because there will never be CDT. Things like trading stock outside of the net because there won't be CDT. It's going to result in basically gross income. Now, just as a reminder, the process that we'll follow for these situations, if you're in the net, going to out of the net, at the time when this takes place, when you move in and out of the net, there's a deemed disposal and market value, and then you are deemed to buy at market value. So you sell it when it leaves and you, so we're, while it is still in right here, so you sell it while it is still in and then you buy it when it is out. It works the other way around as well, out or in, same situation, you will still deem to sell it while it is out of the net and then buy it back when it is in the net. Okay, so let's see, so example one. So before I go, also guys, you'll see these notes, I have assumed that there are certain topics which you've not yet covered in your CTA here, such as capital allowances and recoupments and dividend tax and so forth. So I've kept, I haven't excluded it completely because it, you should see it there, but I don't want you to focus on those calculations. I've tried to keep it very minimal, focus on the CDT implications. Right, so example one. Each of the scenarios below indicate a situation where an asset is moving in or out of the CDT net. When assets move in and out of the CDT net, there's a deemed disposal at market value and then the taxpayer is deemed to buy the asset at market value. For each of the scenarios below, indicate what the deemed disposal will be treated as and what the deemed repurchase will be treated as. So this is question is purely just to test your understanding of it. So a resident becomes a non-resident. So that means a resident becomes a non-resident. What is in the CDT net for a resident? Any asset. And what is in the CDT net for a non-resident? Only immovable property in South Africa and assets attributable to a permanent establishment. So, if you are a resident and you become a non-resident, it means some of your assets are going to be moving out of the net. Which assets? All of your assets except for these two. So, for example, if you have shares, in a listed company or yeah, let's say shares in a listed company. If you're a resident it is included in the CDT net but if you're a non-resident it is not. So when you become a resident becomes a non-resident it moves out of the net. Okay so remember that principle that's what we're looking at here. So a resident becomes a non-resident that means they're moving out of the CDT net and you can find the reference section 9H. A non-resident becomes a resident so only two assets were subject to CDT, immovable property and permanent establishment in South Africa, like we've seen. But when you're a resident, all will be. So you're moving into the net, paragraph 12. Trading stock becomes a capital asset. Trading stock is outside of the net. Capital assets are in the net, so you are moving into the net. Capital asset, which is in the net, becomes trading stock, which is out of the net. Business asset in the net becomes personal use asset, which is out of the net. Personal use asset becomes a business asset. Personal use asset out of the net. Business asset in the net. There we go. Okay, so that's just to, just to prepare you. So now we start looking at it. So an example two. Mr. X is 40 years old and a resident of South Africa. Mr. X carries on a business as a sole proprietor. Mr. X has a computer at home that he purchased two years ago and he has been using it as his own personal computer. So that means it is a personal use asset. 
In the current year of assessment, Mr. X decided that he will, be, uh, that he will use the laptop in his business going forward, and he changed it from his personal computer to a business computer. Okay, so... Personal computer becomes business computer. Right, so this is where it happens, let's say. So, personal computer is out of the CDT net, business computer is in the CDT net. So, this is a personal use asset. So, now guys, let's just see how simple it is. So, at this point in time, as we've seen, there's a deemed disposal at market value. Now, when you sell a personal use asset, is there CDT? No. So, the same thing happens now. You are treated as if you sold your personal use asset at market value. So, there is no CDT because it is, well, because it is a personal use asset. Now you're treated as if you purchased the asset at market value. Now you've bought a business asset at market value. Now again, this might not be something that you've covered yet, but you've definitely covered it at some point, undergrad. If you buy a business asset, like a computer, you can claim wear and tear. So you are treated as if you bought this computer it's capital nature, so you can't claim a general deduction formula, but you can, can claim a capital allowance on it. And in this case, it basically just tells you, you may assume that Mr. X will use it in his business for four months in the current year, and it had a useful life of two years. At the time when this computer was sold, it was for 20,000 rand. So you are treated as if you purchase it at market value, which is 20,000 rands. The capital allowance will be calculated as 20,000 over the remaining two years times 4 over 12. Okay, so guys, most important what I want you to understand is you need to focus on this principle here. It's sold at market value, but it's a personal use asset, so it's no CDT, and then bought as a business asset, which is w and Let's look at example 3. Mr. Y carries on a business as a sole proprietor. Mr. Y needs a computer at home. He decides to take a computer that is being used for business purposes and to transfer it to his personal home where he will use it for private purposes. Okay, so this is a business asset that will become a personal use asset. A business asset is in the CDT net, personal use asset is out of the CDT net. So let's say it happens there. So, deemed disposal at market value. So you are treated as we sold this business asset at market value. Okay, so I just tell you. The originally the computer had cost 30,000 rands and capital allowance of 10,000 has been claimed. The market value is 20,000 rands at the date of transfer. And then I tell you what the recoupment will be and what the base cost will be. You should be able to calculate that in future, but for now, I'm just giving it to you. Right, so, is a deemed disposal at market value. Now, what are we selling? We are treated as if we are selling a business asset. Now, when there's a business asset and you claim capital allowances on it, there will be a recoupment. Again, this is not the focus of the question here, the recoupment. Now, so you'll calculate the recoupment. In this case, it is null rands. All right, and then you have to do your capital gain calculation. Now, the capital gain, the proceeds, will be the market value. You would treat it as if you sold it for 20,000 rands. There was no recoupment. You always deduct the recoupment from proceeds, right? So that's 20,000. And then the base cost, they give us the base cost as being 20,000. Okay, so in this case, there's been no capital gain calculated. That doesn't mean it's always the case, guys. It's purely coincidence. All right, but I want you to focus on the fact that you're doing a CDT calculation and that the proceeds is the market value. Right, market value is recoupment. 
then you are treated as if you purchased an asset at market value. Now, what if you treat it as being purchased? You treat it as if you, as if you purchase a personal use asset. Can you claim a deduction for buying a personal use asset? There's no deduction or allowance on that. Okay, so again, guys, focus on when you dispose of it at market value, you dispose of a business asset. So you do whatever happens when a business asset is disposed of. And then you purchase it as a personal use asset. So you do whatever is done when it's purchased as a personal use asset. Compared to the previous example, where a personal use asset became a business asset. There you were treated as if you sold it at market value while it was a personal use asset. So no CGT. And then you were treated as if you purchased it at market value as a business asset. And if you purchase a business asset, you can claim a capital allowance, some sort of deduction. Right, so the principle is you sell it as one thing and you buy it back as another. Example four. In this example, capital asset is converted into trading stock. Mr. Z carries on a business as a sole proprietor. Mr. Z sells second-hand computers. Mr. Z has a computer that he has been using as an asset in the business. He decides that he will transfer the computer from property, plant, and equipment to trading stock, and that he will sell it if he gets a chance. So a business asset, a capital asset, becomes trading stock. A business asset is in the net, trading stock is outside of the net. Okay, because it's gross income. I tell you, the computer had originally cost 30,000 rand, capital allowance of 12,000 had been claimed, and at the time when the computer is moved, it has a market value of 20,000 rands. And then I give you over here what the base cost is. And the recoupment is null. Alright, so again, you are, at this point in time, deemed sale at market value. Right, so, CGT column, rands column. The first thing that you always do is calculate your recoupment. Null. Then we have our capital gain. You only have a recoupment, guys, if you claimed capital allowances. If you did not claim a capital allowance, so for example, if a person sells a primary residence, then there will be no recoupment. Proceeds, guys, is the market value, 20,000, minus the recoupment amount. Okay, so sorry, my spacing is a bit off there, but this is a CDT calculation. Base cost is 18,000, and that gives us a 2,000 rands capital gain, and that goes into my CDT column. All right, so into my CDT column. Then, it has a market value of 20,000 rands. We are now trading stock. We are now treated as if a deemed purchase at market value. So we are treated as if we purchased trading stock at market value and if you purchase trading stock you can get a tax deduction. Right, so guys again the process there, sell it as one thing, buy it back as another and that is the approach that you keep following for all of these lecture examples.